coming up playing sports, did you have parents that were that parent or did any of your friends have sports parents that were those parents? I think I know what you're talking about, but mine, mine definitely were not that, but I had two, like you, two brothers that, so sometimes my parents were at the game. Sometimes they weren't, you know, never, my parents never went to practice. They, you know, they would drop one kid off, you know, go get another one, drop him off. You know, we were old enough that like, you know, if I was in little league, my brother might've been in, you know, Babe Ruth and my other brother might've been playing high school at that time. So they were just bouncing all around, you know, but, uh, I, I definitely remember, kids who did have those parents <laughs> i was at a game for one of our friends mutual friends son the other day 13 year old baseball and this umpire made a call and it had to do with runner interference um and who owns the jurisdiction to the baseline and what the fielder's supposed to do to catch the ball and what the responsibility there's a lot that goes into that yeah okay so I understand umpires and I understand that people get on them, but dude, we're talking about 13 year old kids that in this, this parent son, like love the good kid. You can tell he's a nice kid, but he ain't probably not going to make the junior varsity team. And I mean, that as nice as I can sound. Yeah. Okay. He's one year away from trying out for the junior varsity baseball team in high school. Okay, which are the most important four years, right, of a kid's baseball career. That's going to detect, de depict whether or not you're drafted, whether or not you go to junior college, a D2 school, a D1 NCAA college, scholarship, you're going to get your school paid for, or are you going to be playing Tuesday night softball in the in the in the, in your hometown, which is okay too, right? Beer league. Beer league. So I'm watching this guy, and this guy comes unglued on this umpire. But not in a way, but in a very con – not like – you ought to, you know, he wasn't even talking to him. He was talking loud enough for both sides of the stands, first baseline, third baseline, to hear, just condescendingly talking down to this other human being like he meant to, if he even made a mistake, you know, because there's always different interpretations of the law or the rule book. Was his kid the one that got called out or no, was the one trying to tag out No, it wasn't even his kid. It wasn't even his kid. It was just on his son's team which is the same team as our friends right. and I looked at this girl who's our friend and I went, this guy right here is not very cool. And she goes, dude, he is the biggest douche. Dude. Anyway, he goes as far, after he gets a reprimanding by the home plate umpire, he goes as far as getting his phone out and Googling the rule book like anybody can do. Right. Now, all of a sudden, he didn't know the rule. He had to look it up, which tells you right there that he shouldn't even be arguing. It right. doesn't matter if you have to prove yourself right because the umpire's right in the middle of the game. He's not going to walk over and go, oh, yeah, you were right. The point is, is how he did it, right? He did it in a way that he thought he was better than this other human being and that he may or may not have been all league. I don't know. He didn't look like much of an mm -hmm. athlete to me. But he's one of those parents that was sneaking out to the stands. He was sneaking out to the cars and pouring beers into cups at a 14-year-old baseball game in red solo cups. What does a red solo cup mean when an adult, hold, when an adult holds it? When you go to a baseball game, 14-year-olds, you hold a Gatorade bottle or a bottled water. Right. Maybe a Pepsi cup if that's what the snack bar sells. Coca-Cola cup. Yep. Okay? The solo's for drinking. Yeah. So he's. Go I'm watching this go on. Him and this other parent, which is a total, what you know, whatever. I'm watching him going, dude, who in the hell do you think you are to treat somebody else that way? Just because they may or may not have made the wrong or right call. When, one, the team that your son plays on is – like, I don't even know if they've ever scored a run. Two, his kid is no good. And I mean that the nicest way. I would never say that to the kid. <laughs> and nobody knows who I'm talking about on this. But he's not going to be a player. So what – do you know what I'm saying? Like, what goes through a person's mind – to want to be that per that parent, like thinking that their kid is the all American, that, that that everybody owes them the spotlight. Now the spotlight's on me, right? I'm reading this rule, and he's reading it out loud. Crossbow going, if the runner does not, and he's reading it like that, like in a real condescending way. Well, and he's making he's making comments <laughs> like this. Looks like I was right, and I'm sitting there going, and this other guy, this other clown, is like prodding him on. Yeah, I knew it, buddy. Tell him and all this shit. And I'm like. Jesus Christ, dude, these kids are 14. Let them play the game. Yeah, it's I, – I, man, I, I don't have any kids in youth sports. I don't have any kids, but what a tough, tough place to be right now, especially, in my opinion, the baseball thing, dude. I mean, none of my friends are 
playing football, but a lot of them have, you know, their kids in baseball and it is just nuts. It's nonstop, you know, travel team and tournament team and high school team and, you know, off the side coaching, you know, on the weekends. And it's no wonder these kids get all burned out and, you know, they're, they're tired of playing ball when they're young. It's just too much, you know, I, I think. And then, you know, then you throw what you're talking about into it, the just overbearing parents who's, you know, every game's the Little League World Series or every game state championship and they're screaming at a volunteer umpire yeah. or even maybe maybe he's paid, but still, you're, you're, you're yelling at a guy who's donating possibly his time to use sports. It's, at least that's what it was when we played, you know, in that younger age. Maybe they're making 10 bucks an hour, you know, and you're going to scream at the guy. Pretty soon you won't have any umpires out there anymore because no one's going to want to get talked to the way that that guy did. And then their kids don't get to play. You know, it's just it's stupid. I, I've hated that. Here was, it, here was a big part of this, though, and tell me and this goes right along with what you're saying. So the next day they had another game and I couldn't make it. I had jujitsu with Alyssa. So I didn't go over and watch this kid's game. So I asked the girl, the mom, of the mom of the player that I was watching, how did it go? And you know the first thing she told me? It wasn't, oh, they played well, they scored some runs, they got beat, they won, he hit, he walked, he got a double, nothing. He goes, remember the guy that was out of line yesterday? I go, yeah. What a, she goes, he was by himself today. His wife wasn't there. His buddy wasn't there. Completely different guy. Didn't say a word. Didn't have an audience. Didn't have his backup. Wow. Didn't have his posse with him. You know what I mean? It's like he he wanted. I well, I think where I was going with this is that living through somebody vicariously is one thing. Um, wanting the best for your kids is right. But man, it goes too far when you start putting that pressure on people to perform or pushing them into something that they might not necessarily be jiving with. I think the only way to do it is show them, introduce them, and let them guide themselves and figure it out for themselves. I don't. Alyssa went into Alyssa went into gymnastics. As much as I would want my daughter to be a badass, like my goddaughter is, Chad Thomas's daughter Lauren. She's just got a full ride to University of Washington for gym. She's an Olympic hopeful. She has had ACL surgery, bad shoulders, bad wrists, injury after ri – their bodies are riddled when they're done, gymnasts. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I wanted Alyssa to be a good gymnast. She went like for four sessions, and she's like, Daddy, I don't like it. I wasn't going to go, you're going to go back there, and I'm going to read the rule book out loud next right. time you're at a meet, right? I don't, I'm not saying that that's the perfect way to parent either, but this guy wanted it to be about him, Crosby. Yeah. At a 14-year-old baseball game. And I'm sitting there going – I've hit home runs. I've hit good pitch. I've been there in baseball, and I'm just sitting there minding my own business going, that poor freaking umpire and that poor kid that this dad is embarrassing in that, in that, on that field right now. That's how bad it was. Here's what I think is funny. Prior to, you know, go, go back to prior to the instant replay, have you ever seen an umpire reverse his call? No. It never happens. So, you know, I remember – Playing, you know, you'd get a, a bad called strike or something like that, and you. I'm not saying I never turned around and went, "Come on," you know, or you know, you. you it's one thing to to say something to to a, an umpire about a bad call, but yeah, being in the stands for one and and ranting at some freaking umpire, the guy's never going to reverse his call. And then if you're calling him out from the stands and being a jackass, he's definitely not going to reverse his call. No, he, if anything, he's going to make another bad call to. To, to show you who's the boss on the field, that's normal human nature stuff. But like you said, that guy wanted the spotlight. He wanted he, to have it. And, and that's funny because he probably you hit it on the head. He lives vicariously through his kid. And then when he can steal the spotlight at the, at the Little League game, he does it. You know, that's. But I've also seen it to where no matter how much they love their kid, I was at a, 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 a local high school basketball game probably in the last four years. It was the whatever they call the farm league to basketball for be, around here. It's not little league. I don't know what it's called. It's not boys and girls club, but it's like, you know, it's like yeah, eighth yeah. graders yeah, playing yeah, summer ball. Is. Yeah, yeah. And there was these tournaments and shit. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and this parent had one of those dad seats, right? Those padded bleacher seats. Mm -hmm. Walked in there with the little beer belly, but you could tell he's probably an athlete in his day. But he yelled at his son from the stands. And then, you got to remember, these kids are being coached. They have a coach, an assistant coach, and maybe even an equipment manager and a manager that helps. And all they got all these people in place. 
And this guy was making it about him. Like, this is a big gym now. This is a big high school gym. And he is making it as loud as he can so that everybody in the stands knows that he's got a stud son, Mm. that he was probably once an athlete, and that they can't let go. They can't let go. So instead of letting that kid's natural ability take place and fun to sink into their system, it's 100% kill or be killed attitude. And you, sooner or later, will run out of the love of the game oh, if yeah. you continue to have that type of pressure put on you. It's natural. I, I played with the kid, and uh, he was good, man. He he was he pitched, and he was one of those younger kids that, you know, he, he threw hard and he threw strikes and, you know, probably, you know, would have been like a, a college player for sure, if not more. But, man, his dad used to just ride him. And, you know, dumb stuff. If he threw, you know, if he walked a kid, you know, you could hear his dad yelling from the, from the, yelling at his kid, you know, from the bleachers. And after the games, you know, if he didn't pitch as good as he could, his dad would be yelling at him. And he was a legit, like, good pitcher. And uh, I know that kid quit like midway through high school ball because, dude, he was tired of it. Like, tired of you'd it. You'd be yelled at by your dad over and over. You know, even when you know, you know, he had to have had some kind of inclination that his son was good. Everybody knew this kid was good. And I think he just got tired of it, dude. You know what I mean? It was just nonstop. And I imagine at home he got the same stuff. Just he was done with it. Like you said, you fall out of love of it. If all you're getting is yelled at, you know, and, and you know, why would you continue to do it? It's, and, and why? What makes a parent parent that way? I don't care if it's genetic or if it's something that was, you know, introduced to you with the way your dad did it, but there's only really one way to get the best out of somebody. Now, I'm not saying that a drill sergeant isn't needed once in a while. I'm not saying that practice sessions shouldn't be – like I've seen wrestling coaches and baseball coaches. I've been that get player, and I've been a coach too. You know, you get on them. You get on them, calisthenics, training, conditioning, mindset, focus. If they're not practicing the legit plays and they're not practicing with intention, you get on their ass. Where's your head at? Get it in the game, you know? But when it, beco- when it comes to a parent and it's game day and that continues to go on, when all of the work's been done and it's time to relax and, and, and release that, that, that energy that, of being a good athlete and playing up to your potential, you cannot play up to your potential if you're on pins and needles. 100%. You can't do it. Baseball is a hard enough game to succeed at with the focus and the mental aptitude it takes. Now you're going to tell me your butt's going to be puckered up and you're going to be white knuckling the bat to where you're literally choking off an aluminum bat to where you can't even move your muscles. You just can't perform that way. Well, and you're, you're hearing it from your coach. You know what I mean? hundred percent what you said, you know, definitely during practice, you, your coach should be on you and pushing you and you know, all that stuff. And then at game time, Coaches are going to say certain things. You know, if you make a mistake, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, but you don't need to hear it from your coach and then your dad in the stands as well. You know what I mean? Get coached by the coach. And if your dad wants to give you his advice later, that's what it should be. You know what I mean? You don't need to be, like you said, you're going you know, to hear it from all over the, the field and, and expect to perform. Well, it's not going to happen. Very few people rise up to – I'm not saying your, your coach – should be able to get you to rise up to the occasion, but you're going to hear it from your dad who, who should be like your number one fan ripping you. Yeah. You're going to go in the tank even harder, especially I'm talking about like a pitcher. That's a mental. It's none of your dad's business. Anyway. It's not, it's right. none of your dad's business at that point. Right. It's, it's no matter how good you were, I don't care if you are Nolan Ryan, I would get, I would bet if they took a test of guys that were good, legitimate athletes and players, meaning they understand the mindset and the approach and the, you know, the entire platform, if you will, what it takes to be successful in sports. So let's take Al Leiter. His son's a stud in NCAA. He's going to be a top, top round draft pick this month, right? He's throwing BBs, I believe, for Vanderbilt in, in Nashville, one of the best top baseball programs in the country. I would bet money, and I don't have proof of this, but I've been around dads like that have been at Al's level. They don't do it. 
No. They don't do it because they get it. People that don't get it act an ass. They're the ones that don't, they don't understand. Now, that's not the means that I didn't love seeing Earl Weaver or freaking some of the best managers run out, Billy Martin, run out of the dugout. What was the guy's name in Seattle? Uh, Lou Pinella. That doesn't mean that I didn't love seeing these guys run out of the dugout and start a freaking war with an umpire and pull a base out of the ground and throw it. That's part of the game. But when the dad is in the stands... That means they didn't get it. They weren't there. They didn't know what they were doing. And they think that because they failed, they have the vision to get their son past the level that they got to. That's right. the way that I see it. 100%. When parents act that way. You know, the, the coach is qualified. Your your coach, Dalmore, was famous for it, right? Yeah. He, he got booted and went and sat on a light pole or something. And coach, those guys, it, it's kind of like what we talked about, food critics. Those guys are qualified to go out onto the field and raise, you know, hell over a bad call. They're allowed to get up and say something to a, an umpire about a pitch. A dad in the stands is not qualified. And to talk about what you're saying, you're, you're right. A dad can get you, you know, to a certain level, right? And even the best, unless that that dad is going to coach baseball, but, you know, your dad can get you equipment and give you time and, you know, practice with you in the off hours and things like that. But when you're handed off to your high school team or your college team, the dad's job's over, dude. Yeah, that doesn't mean that the dad can't have a talk on a Saturday morning. 100%. About, but when it comes game time and performance time, shut the f yes. up and let the kid play. I watched this in the stands the other day, and I'm like, dude, if I'm the ball player and my dad's acting like this, I'm saying, pops, I don't want you any more games. Yep. Well, especially, especially raising that kind of a, a an art, a fuss over a blown call. I mean, if you're talking a blown call in the state championship game and your kid's the one that, you know, was tagged out when you believed he was safe, I, I, I could get your emotions running over. But your run-of-the-mill Memorial Day weekend Saturday baseball game – as a 13-year-old kid, you, you should not be blowing your stack in the stands. With very little talent on the field. <laughs> right. Not to say there ain't one or two of them out there that are legit, but it, as far as their parents go, there's some legit talent out there. I saw a couple good plays. I didn't hear any of their dads barking. Mm -hmm. It was this one where I'm sitting there going, I was literally like, you're really reading the rule out loud. Like, you're telling us a story like you think we're all paying attention to you, you yeah. jackass. Nobody cares about you. Let the kids play. This is their time to shine. Your days are over, Bruce Springsteen. It's glory days is gone <laughs> for you. Okay, so turn the page and treat and respect the game, respect the field, respect the personnel that have given us the ability to get sports back, first of all, then have a place to do it at, and then have umpires that will take their time out of their day to go and umpire because you're sure as hell not doing exactly. it. Nor are you coaching, obviously. Nor are you coaching <laughs> that's funny that i bet all those umps were loving these you know crowdless games because i think what you're talking about is very common you know I, I, I would bet you it's at every game i bet you every game those umpires are getting chastised by the mom or the dad and the bleachers you know like you said they don't know they don't know the first thing about it and and yet they want to yell at the 13 year old you umpire you know, because their kid got tagged out at a close play or something like that, and it, it's just, it's crazy to me, dude. I'm, I'm happy in a way that I don't have to see that stuff. Do you have the mentality of the naysayer, the guy like in my position the other day? What is the right way to react to that? Because a hothead, like sometimes you know, one of my brothers had been known to you know go over there and just right. But now you got kids there. You have other kids in the stands. You have other parents there. What is the right way to handle this situation? Do you call the guy aside and say, look, man, we, we don't want to hear it. We Just chill out. We understand that you love your kid, but this you're representing all of us. All the fans on this side are part of this team, and we're going to go down this road of summer baseball. Let's, can you talk to that kind of a parent about it? Or do they think they're such a hothead they're going to want to get physical right away? Oh, is yeah. it any of your business to cut into it as another parent? I don't even have skin in the game. with. I just have a friend that has a kid on the team. And I hated for her to have to sit there and listen to this because she's trying to enjoy baseball. She's a baseball fan, right? I mean, I got to think that that – well, it's not, you said the, the ump gave him a little verbal warning. I, I, I mean – you know that that that's getting physical or 
very, very verbal if anybody else says something to that dude. You can just, I wasn't even there, but I can tell the type of guy it is. You know, he's got eight beers in him already at the Little League game, and he's yelling at an umpire. You know, he, he would love nothing more than for somebody to say something to him so he could continue the uh, continue the rant. But, you know, like he said, the, the umpire's got to do something. And then if he can't get it done, the coach, right? The, the coach or one of the assistants got to walk over and say, hey, chill out. And that's embarrassing for the guy's kid, obviously. Yeah. But that's that's kind of, I think, what he, has he to kept, happen. He kept making remarks like this. Like um, another one of the parents were sitting there, and they had an infant, probably two, three years old, that was just, you know, just walking. So the, the, the little baby girl would walk by him, and I'd, I would hear him say stuff like, oh, yeah, she's hated me since day one. And, like, he put his hand out to, like, you know, get her to give him a high five or a five or something, and she wouldn't do it. And then he'd look at the mom and be like, oh, yeah, he hates me. And then his wife made a remark like, yeah, a lot of my friends have said my husband's an asshole. Swear to God in my life, this is what's being said in the stands. Right after he did this. So his wife, you, she's sitting there eating a pretzel. You know she's not keen to this, but she's not saying anything. Right. But you could tell that she was like, God dang it. You can't put a muzzle on this guy. Why does it go that far? Well, it's It's almost... I just can never see myself getting on somebody's ass about a dumb call. Now, when I was, if I was coaching high school baseball like I did for one year, thought I was ready for it, way more of a commitment than I thought. Yeah, I kindly backed out. I bowed out because I wasn't going to be the guy that was going to be. That wasn't going to be my life, becoming a teacher and a coach. Nothing wrong with that, right? But when I did it, I got in a very heated dispute with another coach over a play at the plate. A guy that we both know. I don't. Even, I don't know if you if your friends or what, but um, and I remember that day like it was nothing, like it was yesterday. And it's like my competitiveness at that time in my life is different than it is now. I'm still super competitive, but I also understand that we're asking a lot for these kind of people to get it right. And the human error is going to occur in, in baseball umpiring. That's why the even the major leagues now have what. Instant replay. High school doesn't have that. So mm-hmm. these umpires are at a disadvantage. You gotta be the human eye is not gonna catch everything, period. And they should know the rule book. Now they if they're going to go umpire at that level, they should have a good hold or grasp on the law, the, the good interpretation of the rules. Oh yeah. If they're gonna coat. They need to know what's going on if they're gonna umpire. Straight up. But looking back on it, I'm like, Jesus, why? You were wrong when you think about it now? It doesn't matter if I was wrong. It was like I was making it about me. I was protecting my players because I wanted to win. But it could have just been a walk up to the umpire and said, look, that's the wrong call. We both know that you got it wrong. Let's get it right next time in between innings instead of making the focus on me and this other coach. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? Do, do you remember? I, I, I'm not going to know any of the details behind this, but remember that one coach that they used to show those clips where he threw all the baseball bats out onto the field and yeah. threw all the balls and, and just did all that crazy stuff. You know, got Earl Weaver. Is that who it is? Yeah. Oh, God. He's, he did it. I mean, there's several. Lou Pinella did it when he threw all the bats out. There's been several of them. Lou Pinella or Earl Weaver took his jersey off one time and put it down and freaking kicked dirt all. I mean, they've done all kinds of sh- crazy shit. Yeah. Billy Martin's the one that called George Brett out on the pine tar incident and caused that huge uproar oh. when he bitched about that. Um, but yeah, coaches get competitive. They want to win. Tommy Lasorda was another one that would lose his shit on umpires. A lot of them have. A Yogi Bear, a lot of those yeah. managers would lose it. But at that point, these umpires are making a hundred and a half, two hundred and fifty thousand yeah, dollars a year. Is a little different. It's a different, game, right? Yeah. They got to know the game. I've also seen, like you said, a lot of the 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 you know more polished coaches. You know, they'll walk out and and you know, hey, you know your strike zones. Looser than <laughs> what's the old saying? No, you know, and 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 real real. <laughs> Do you middle, want me to say it? No, <laughs> real bigger middle, than, not looser than, bigger than. Yeah, bigger than. Uh, you know, but they'll reel them in, in in a nice, you know, a professional way. I guess is what you'll say. But I could see, you know, like I said, I could see in a big game, you know, pro level and things like that. You know, bad calls, dude. They can cost you a game, right? I. A couple. What was it? A few years ago, it cost the Giants a game in the in the in the finals. A bad call at first. It, again, we have the privilege of watching super slow motion instant replay where you could make that call all day long. Those guys don't have that, and those dudes run so fast, and you know the, it's everything to try and watch that play happen and make the right calls and things. It's hard, and 
I, you know, like you said, at pro level, those dudes are making a lot of money. They should be the best. They're going to get ripped. 13U baseball on a Saturday, that guy shouldn't be getting ripped. Ripped to the point to where belittled. Yeah. Not like, you suck up, look through them, not, look through them, not at them, and all of the things that you're talking about saying, like all the clever things that we can say, you know, that we have time to think about to yell at an umpire with, right? Um, it's a good game, Blue. You should watch, watch it. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that, you know. Um, but this guy was belittling. And he was so obnoxious. I guess that's the perfect word to describe him. So you didn't get back to me on how I should have handled it. Should I have said for the protection of the kids or the protection of the games or the future, like put him on notice? Like, hey, dude, this ain't about you. And if he gets mouthy with me, you just be like, look, you could start all the shit you want, but it ain't going to get you anywhere. You know, like fighting's fighting, but I'm not going to go start a fight. But I felt compelled to tell him, bro, you don't know the game. You're not, you don't even have the right interpretation of this rule. Like the whole, the whole thing would have been stopped if the, the, they thought that the, the infield fly should have been put into effect, right? But not with two outs in this instance. So they had that part of it wrong. Then they were trying to determine who had the right to the baseline, right? On the, between second and third. The interpretation is a tough one. It's a real tough one. And he literally made this umpire feel. What, the runner run into the fielder? Was he was trying to field a, a fly ball? The umpire, the runner got in a lead position of off the base a little bit, but could get back before he was tagged out if he needed to. He knew he wasn't going to tag up in advance. He was just there. And with him being off the base a little bit, the ball's up in the air, and the shortstop is kind of like, Ball, ball, ball. But, dude, he's, like, all over the place. So the umpire, the the runner's like, if he drops it, I'm gone. That's what's in a 13-year-old's head. I'm scoring. I'm going to get the trophy at the pizza parlor tonight. <laughs> the game ball, gosh dang it. I'm going to have a cute girl in the stands tell me good good base wear my Jimmy. cleats into the baseball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> into the pizza joint. <laughs> into the pizza joint tonight. <laughs> right? That's him yeah. thinking that. And then whether or not the umpire's wrong or right, it's not about – being loud yeah. and obnoxious, just go over to him and say, hey, Blue, can I talk to you for a minute? I think you got that play wrong and educate him. Know that he's been put on he's been put on notice of like, look, maybe you need to go home and read that rule again. I think it's wrong. I don't care because we're getting beat 17 to 1, right? Yeah. So that one run isn't going to count or whatever, right? Not a big deal. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. There's a right way to handle everything. Right. And it's not pulling your phone out and reading the rule out loud to belittle somebody. Right. 100%. That's a, You handle it exactly like you said go talk to him after the game say hey i i disagree with that call you made you know i believe the rule states this th and then let him say something back to you you know what i mean no one will do that though and then here's the other part is that the coaches weren't even bitching the coaches weren't sitting there going blue you got it wrong you suck they weren't saying shit yeah i, I mean i i don't know if you're telling the right score but when you're down 17 to 1 like you said there's no reason to get heated at the volunteer umpire over a, even if it was a blown call at that point, I mean, you're going to come back, you know, 15 runs and freaking no, it's crazy. So a friend of mine wrote this quote in a text when I told that story just now, when I was telling this story to them about like, why do we live like that? Why as parents, and I don't know if it happens with moms a lot, but moms have the superstar mentality. Yeah. My boy is better than your boy. My daughter is the, you know, the best on the team kind of attitudes. I've seen that out of moms. Dads have more of the, that's my boy. He's going to be a major leaguer. He was just mm -hmm. like me when I was that age, could've, right? Could have, could have, could have, would have, should have. Yeah. You know, like uncle Rico throwing the football over <laughs> that mountain and shit. Now you're selling Tupperware. <laughs> Chill out. Parents these days suck. Exclamation point. They are forcing their dreams, unlived dreams and shortcomings on their kids. They have taken all the fun out of it and pressure on the kid to not disappoint them to the point where it becomes not even fun for the kid to dress up in uniform anymore. Yep. That's told to me by a parent that has kids that are in sports, and this is a female parent, and she gets it. It's not fun. It ruined. I was so uneasy, un, so at, just put off guard there. And, I, and my daughter, Alyssa, is there, so now she's seeing this. And I was just like, dude, I want to freaking wrap this kid's head with a wrench. Just like beat him for what he's doing. He was probably 35 years old. He wasn't a kid. He was a parent. 
with his wife there. I don't want to beat a dead horse, which it seems like I am, but I got irritated, man. I was like, good night, dude. Are you serious? This is this is like the lowest talent form of baseball. I've I've went and watched my 10-year-old nephew play. He's better than most kids on these teams. <laughs> and I mean that. Do you, you remember like at least, you know, I would I would go to like my brother's games if I wasn't playing or whatever. And it was fun to go to other games. You know, you could you could go, you know, play around with your friends, you watch the game, you go. I went to one of your nephew's games. It was years and years ago. They they weren't fun anymore. Like you would not want to be a kid at one of those travel ball, you know, baseball games anymore. They're all business and it's sad. That's what I mean is like I just I don't think those kids are getting what the fun part of, you know, team sports really is when you're being just, you know, bombarded with nonstop, you know, baseball, 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 baseball. And like you said, your one time to relax and enjoy your skills and stuff is at the games. And the games now have an un, you know, an unreal tension in them now in the stands and stuff because of how serious they're, you know, these parents are, you know, taking these games and putting all this pressure on their kids are not even fun anymore. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be hanging out at a little league baseball game anymore. They're no fun anymore. Well, then what is the mentality of parents today? Are we a society of champions and we want to badger our kids into being champions and we're going to stay on them with this iron fist of like, you ever seen Rocky IV? You're Yvonne Drago mm-hmm. today. You know, get your ass in there and hit the robot. Like, there's there's that mentality, right? Mm-hmm. You're the best there is of like this basketball parent I watched. I was like, dude, are you nuts? Are you serious? Your son's five foot ten white kid. Yep. NBA is probably not going to become Colin anymore. Maybe Gonzaga. Maybe if he can keep, if he's if he's if he's, can, if he's a, an intelligent kid enough to get into Gonzaga. Now look, that ain't taking nothing away because the kid was a good player. But the mentality is is that if we yell louder, the NBA is going to come and knock yep. him because we're the parent that's got the best kid on the court. He's going to go pro. And I, I don't look at it that way. So then you have the mentality of, like that text I just read you. Don't be a sucky parent. Yeah. Don't be that person. Let your kid have fun. It's game time. Then there's the participation award family. My kid deserves everything that your kid gets because they're on the same team Don't and like they it. both wear the same. No, that's not true either because there's going to be a separation in talent. And if that kid's not prepared for that, whether he's the one that's the talented one or the one that's mid-range level or the one that is no talent, they better be prepared for what's ahead of them in life and they mm-hmm. better be able to adapt. Does that make sense? Well, that's like you, I think you hit it on the head. Is that your four years in high school or what are going to? Well, just making a high school team, right? Th- that high school is, in my opinion, where everything gets shooken out, right? Because you're really going to do a tryout, and high school coaches don't keep shitty kids because their parents ask them to. You know what I mean? It's just it's how it happens. I think that even in these travel teams and stuff, they'll take anyone because they want the money. You know, I, I I believe that. I could be wrong. I don't have any kids in the thing. But when you actually do a tryout and you're actually – could be cut or, you know, will be cut if you don't make it, that's where it shakes out. And, you know, all that, I I mean, is high school baseball still with all this travel going around to your knowledge? I mean, is it still where you want to be or are people bypassing the high school program now? Um, Not bypassing, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder if you could pay to be in a travel team. No, I think that I think that you're not going I think that by the time that that part of the year rolls around, they have to they're going to have to be on the high school team, right? Because that's how you're you're that's how you're going to be somebody in that area. Now, I don't know if there's travel ball going on during high school season because I don't know if coaches would dig on that, right? Like if you got a stud that pitches for let's say this high school are you going to want him leaving? Because you're playing in high school ball. You're playing Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays sometimes. Wednesdays, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, something. So when would you travel? You're not going to go like on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday because you're in school this time of year during high school ball. So they can't travel in the week. So and then on the weekends they have high school tournaments or double headers at least. Yeah. And then they have some early season tournaments. So there's no travel ball during it, right? But that brings up the other thing of multi sport athletes where. That was at one time like the goal of 
I don't think it is anymore. No, now it's specialized. Yep. Like Bryce Harper didn't even get a, 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 he had to go back in his GED so he could get into a community college at Southern Nevada and then get drafted out of a community college. Yeah. Because you have to have a GED to get, to go to that league, right? Mm-hmm. He, I think you have to have a high school diploma or a GED to get drafted. I'd have to look that up. But for what for he had he he skipped so much high school to travel and play on these high end league teams that he didn't graduate with a diploma. Yeah. But whatever the case is, his dad saw something in him. He was going to be the number one draft pick. It paid off for him. Right. Okay, he's freaking Bryce Harper. But the point is, is that even if it's travel ball or even if it's sanctioned high school ball, those coaches especially in travel ball cuz now you start dealing with like some coaches that that are at the, the their way of working into the game those travel ball coaches a lot of them want to go on and and get a place in an organization right. they want to go on to coach independent ball then a ball and then double a then triple a and hopefully make it to the pros that's that's a big thing of saying like I'm in this I'm a I want to be a baseball coach so they're looking at it like this is a legit form of baseball. This is us wanting to go out and work on our skills because really, what are you going to win in freaking travel ball? A freaking tournament? You You're competitive, nothing. but it's more of a skill set deal. So now you definitely don't want pressure on these kids when they're trying to perform. So I would think those kind of coaches would be like, whoa, pops, you need to cool your freaking jets. And I think they would be too. Like you know, more so of not wanting it? Yeah, of course. I, I think, you know, uh, and I think they really don't want, you know, the dad coach involved. The you know they they want to take over the whole program to try and get the kids the best that they can be. You know what I mean? I think that. Well, the few that that I know of around here, you know, they're most of them are ex pro or they, you know, were D one kind of college guys that they know what's going on and yeah they they don't want the the mindset thrown off on the field. They don't want the kids you know, being rattled from the stands and things like that. They're, they're legit trying to win games. I, again, you probably hit it on the head that they, they want to move their own career forward. They either want to fill their baseball school or they want to move on to college coaching or they want to, you know, yeah, be in the, they so they got to have a good winning record, right? Doesn't, you know, they well, don't. Let me ask you this. Why do you just love baseball that much that you're going to go out and take up your entire summer to coach a team unless you have aspirations of moving on in the coaching realm too? It would seem to me like, yeah, man, like I want to work my way into a, an, a, an assistant role at a junior college and work my way up. Mm. That's what I would think, right? M- high school coaches maybe, maybe not want to go on to the college ranks or the pro ranks. They're they're a teacher and they have a coaching job at the school to make a little extra money. They're, they're, they're a teacher coach. Yeah, yeah. That's how it is in high school. There are some t- teachers now, that, from what I learned, that you don't have to be a teacher at the high school to be a coach. I heard that too. I didn't know that. I always thought that you had to be. Well, Savage, is he a teacher at Reno High? I don't think so. He owns a plumbing company. Well, that's his family, right? No, that's him. Isn't that Lynn? Pete's his br- – John is at UCLA. Pete's the head coach. I thought he's the one that did that. So I wonder – so he's like you're saying. He doesn't even have a teaching position. He's just a – he's a he's a coach. I think you're right. I, I And I – well, I think uh, um, one of my buddies was – was it either Spanish Springs, one of the newer schools, and, and I know he was not a teacher either. So maybe it's been like that for a while. Yeah. That you don't need to be a a teacher to be the head coach. Was he a head coach? I was going to say, I wonder well, if Savage is a head coach. I wonder if he is a coach. I wonder if he is a teacher. I bet you he teach. I know his family. I, I know that is his family. That I thought that's his company. company. Well, that's it's his, his company. It started back like in 1900. So they're like the. Oh yeah, I'm just saying he's the heir right now. Yeah, like he's yeah. the guy that runs it. I thought he was. Well, there's only two brothers, Len, right. Len, Len, and, Len for sure. Len's there. Len's at the plumbing company. Len's there. Maybe Pete. Maybe maybe, maybe Pete Pete's is, a teacher. is a teacher. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if we settled anything today. It was just on my mind how ba- you know when you're in a position to where it's almost like this. You go to a movie, right? And you've been looking forward to seeing this movie for days. Seeing the trailers, seeing the previews, you you can taste the popcorn. You can taste the licorice ropes and the jujubes <laughs> and the junior mints, and he's going to pay for it. The large Coca-Cola with the mm-hmm. crushed mm-hmm. ice. Mm. Bro, the smell of popcorn. Okay, the sound, the audio. And then you got some deal weed talking the whole time. Or on their phone. Or on texting, their phone. Dude. Don't, oh isn't it God. our job to stand up and pop them in the temple and say, what are you thinking? Who raised you? <laughs> 
I, in the movie scenario, man, I, I seen people do that tons of times. But what do you do? What do you just sit there in the dark and try to? You're just sitting there like today we had this thing running right here, right? It blows this hair. I was like, what in the frick is running? I was doing a podcast this morning with Benelli, and I'm looking up. I'm freaking. I even said pause the podcast. I got up to check my thermostat. It was just this the whole time. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> And then Clay comes in here and goes, oh, it's just this battery charger. I said, son of a bitch, 60, 75 minutes, hour and 15 minutes of this thing. A two-hour movie, you worked all, oh, it's dude. not cheap to watch a movie. 20, now you yeah, take 20. a family of four there. I'm going to be damned if it's going to get ruined. Oh, yeah. What if you're in a restaurant like Denny's where the booths match up and your mom's there and you're eating, you're using, you're over there getting a grand slam on your mom's birthday because parents in that generation love <laughs> Denny's. <laughs> the grand slam. They love Denny's. And then there's, you got this deal weed in the booth next to you that's saying the F word every other word. What, what what about the kick kicking of your uh, airplane seat, dude? You say something about that? Oh yeah, but the cussing in public. There's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. You want to cuss around your buddies at a bar on a Friday night, and there's not mm -hmm. a woman sitting there not that's dance. trying to enjoy her freaking grand slam and a side of a short stack <laughs> on the side. You're telling me that I'm I'm just gonna say something now? Is there might be a fight and ensue? That's life, dude. That's the thing about. That's what's wrong with all of this, Crosby, is that people aren't held accountable. That parent should have been told, shut the frick up. Yep. This ain't about you. Quit cussing when my mom's in here and quit talking during this movie I've been looking forward so much to, to watch. <laughs> it's changed, right? That It used to be that way. I think nowadays people don't want to get involved, right? My dad was five foot five at, the, at, at his best day. Five foot six and a half maybe wearing heels because sometimes he did that. Just kidding. I hope not. But... <laughs> He would jump up in a, I don't care how big the dude was. He, it didn't matter. That was the old school mentality, the born 50 year, years too late mentality. Yep. You jump up and you put somebody in their place that's out of place. But we can't do it anymore because phones are out. You're getting sued. It's on social media. You're Everybody's going to TMZ. Everybody's got a gun. Nobody likes to meet at the bike racks anymore. Mm. It's freaking crazy. So you sit there and you know what you do instead, Crosby? You... Miss the experience. Yep. You lose your fulfillment and enjoy and, and your enjoy and your ability to enjoy this situation, this experience. I've been looking forward to watching my kid play all week. And I've been watch, looking forward to watching my friend's kid play all week. He's been asking me to play, come watch him play. And I get there and got to listen to you act an, like an asshole. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to me. You, you know what it is too, man, is that there used to be a time where normal level-headed thinking people, you could say, hey, man, chill out. You know, you're you're making a scene and, and somebody would go, you're right. I'm sorry. You know, whatever. You're right. Blew my stack. It's Fred not like that anymore. You know, most of the time you could be as polite as you want. You could say, hey, would you mind uh, not texting on your phone while you're in the movie theater? And chances are that person's going to turn around and say, GFY. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whether they're whether they're bad enough to back it up or not. They're gonna lip off, like you said. Now you're now you're possibly fighting in the movie theater in front of your old lady and kids, and it's just yeah. People people it's, in the world became no less considerate. Of, no consideration, no respect, no accountability. Well, it's know, sad. It's freaking sad, man. It's because a lot of people are on the old you know keyboard talking shit, and they take that into the real world. And Probably again, because it, most of them have never been punched in the face. Mike Tyson says everybody's tough until you've been punched in the right. face. And then you got these guys that never been held accountable, texted during movies, cussed in the Denny's when they shouldn't have been, and now you put them behind a wheel and they think it's okay to go 85 and a 55 yep. because their car can do it because you got some souped-up little IROC Z. No, I don't give a <laughs> shit. You're not going to put my daughter in danger when she gets her driver's license. You're going to be respectful and you're going to respect our roadways because that's how people die. But you know what? People don't give a shit about that either. That, that, I'm just saying how it escalates. Oh, yeah. It just keeps escalating because there's nobody gets punched in the mouth anymore. The, this morning on my way to work, I, I made a right-hand turn, which I had the green light. And this lady, she comes all the way in the intersection. She's going to turn left. You know, She has to yield to me. I turn. She gets right on my bumper. And I'm cruising, you know probably the speed limit or a little bit more and she's right behind me and then we come to the school zone so i slow down to do 15 in the school zone and literally i could not see the headlights of her car she, that's how close she is to my bumper so then i just i go five miles an hour and i, I know she's not going to pass me because we're in a school zone and there's another lane full of cars over there and i could just see her boiling over inside 
And I just, I did five all the way down Plum Lane in front of that school and that church. Good. And then it, and then it, literally three quarters of the way through that school zone, it hits her that she's in a school zone and driving like a freaking moron. Yeah. You know, and then she backs off and then, you know, it, but it's like little things like that, right? You, 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 people have to be held accountable. People have to be inconvenienced for their negligence. People have to be told, shut the F up. You're right, 100%. Because we're allowed to disrespect everybody now. Oh, that yeah. was my point about the fast yeah. car, because it escalates to disrespecting the police now. Yeah. And now the blue line's in trouble. Nobody wants to be a cop anymore. Right. Because they're, they don't, it's not about not being tough enough or not having balls or not wanting to take a risk or not having no fear of going into this freaking house with four people that might have guns and you're trying to serve a warrant or you're looking, you have a search warrant or whatever. <clears throat> Nobody wants to do it. You know why? Because... It's easy for people that don't have the ability to do anything else in life to hurt somebody. Yep. And that's what's wrong. And that's, it all starts with that mouthy parent. And I know people are going to be like, you can't even compare that. Yeah, you can because nobody's held accountable anymore. And it just, we, we should do the part two of this of maybe open up questions on Instagram or Facebook or Bookface or face MySpace, plant. you know, <laughs> face plant, you know, set, ha, let's get comments about. Why, why aren't people held accountable anymore? Do you think it's right? You know, like give situations and scenarios. I'm not saying that my way is the highway, but there is still a such thing as being respectful. And we've lost that in this country. Yep. I'm telling you, I see it every day, dude. I see it every day. Dude, there's people that will go 40 in my neighborhood. I've literally thrown rocks through windows to stop cars, oh, yeah. to tell them, you better slow your freaking ass down. It's not your... Right. To take the law into your own hands. You know, you are vigilante and yeah. And I'm like, no, I want to make sure that people don't run over my dog or my kid because we pay good money to live in these neighborhoods and build our houses where we want them. And there's a reason why there's laws. There's a reason why it says 25. That's not a recommendation. And there's not enough law enforcement out there to be everywhere. You got it. No, there's you're a hundred dude. You have to take it. Police your your own stuff. You have to. 100%. 100%. Not going to let, even take a chance. But but when some kid whippersnapper thinks that he can <laughs> just fly up and down my road, dude, you can ask my brothers. I've literally took off in the UTV one day and followed him to his, and, I, and lo and behold, 18 year old kid, you know, probably just got done listening to some Marilyn Manson. His dad answers the door and said, This is what he did. If it happens again, it ain't going to be good. That is not a threat, but I'm telling you, I'm going to freaking bring it to him if he, if he does it again. What did he do? I said, You get him over here and he'll tell you what he did. So the kid comes up, flying up the road. We yell, Slow down. So I see him come around the corner again, like he's going to test me. So, dude, I reach right down in the freaking little, you know what? <laughs> grab a little, <laughs> little how do probably a little slower than, a little smaller than a baseball. Woof, lefty still got it. Whack! Doesn't even stop. He's scared now. Oh, yeah. Now he's scared. He ain't tough enough to stop and defend his truck getting hit, his car getting hit. So then I hop in the UTV and I follow him up there. And he parks. It's right up here. And his dad comes door and I said, this is what he did if he does it again. And the like, oh, oh, oh. and the dad just says, I'll handle this. And I heard him start yelling at him right before <laughs> the door's even all the way shut. Good. So it just shows you that this kid thought he could get away with it. Why? Just, it's not a matter if you can get away with it or not. It's not a matter that you know the rule book and that you can read out loud in front of me. I'm glad you can read. Congratulations. But it has to do with nobodygivesashit.com. So for you to race up my road, you're not going to get a call from Mario Andretti to join his racing team. Right. Okay. You're not going to get a date with. You're probably going to be in jail. The girls aren't looking at you going, "Call you remind me of Tom Cruise in Top Gun. Will you please call me?" No, you dipshit. Maybe you're, days of thunder. You're just being an idiot. And I know that kids are going to make mistakes, but dude, you've got to be held accountable. You don't race in a neighborhood. And you just don't do it. Anyway, I'm on one now. That that you got me that mad at that game. I've been thinking about it every day since it happened. It's been four days. I hope you go back. I know I'm Set thinking the about. It. There's one tomorrow. Oh, God. You want to go with me? No. We walk in there. <laughs> Should we all walk in there dressed up like Doc Holliday and Kurt Russell from Tombstone? Let's and just have walk in there and be like, I'm your Huckleberry. No, we'll, we'll <laughs> go in there in blue blue, uh, blue shirts and black slacks with those shoes the umpires wear and we'll all sit around him. <laughs> yeah. You, you got something to say to the umpire? That's a great <laughs> call. Call him out on everything he says. Yeah. So everybody, Actually. <laughs> everybody go out and rent a movie or watch a movie. You don't even rent movies. You go down to your local Blockbuster and get um, get this movie called The Fan. And watch 
Wesley I, Snipes I and Robert De Niro. The movie you're thinking of is Falling Down with uh, Kirk Douglas Kirk when he Douglas loses him on the road. But this stuff. one's the fan where, where Robert De Niro's the super psycho oh, yeah. Giants fan and he wants to like know he's a super fan Wesley of Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Freaks you, out on you him. You can just take things too far, man. Mm -hmm. We got to be held accountable. Okay? I agree. So think about that. We're not trying to live your life for you. We're just breaking it down. This Life Ain't For Everybody podcast. Chad, Alex, thank you to Jack Daniels for supporting us. Enjoy it responsibly. Never allow underage drinking. Tom, Jake, hit that button. What song are we going to go out with today? We talked about, we've got pretty aggressive today. This song right here is called 30-06 by Brent Cobb. 30